Hi guys, this is Elliot from the Little Punk People here. Today I'm here with Doug Pinnock from King Zax. Are yep. you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm dead ready. Let's do this. How are you doing today? Are you ready for the for tonight's show? Uh, yeah, I think so. We just did sound check and I'm all ready to go. Awesome. Yeah, room sounds uh, noisy, but when people come, it'll clear up and sound will be better and it'll be fun. Great. If you could rid this world of one thing, what would you pick? Um, prejudiced. Yes, that's good. That's a good answer. Cool. Do you think that there is life somewhere out there on, a, on other planets? I'm definitely convinced of that. I was abducted by an alien once. Really? Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was a little kid and this, this uh, being came into my bedroom and I thought it was a person. And uh, I thought it was Jesus, I thought, because he had long, blondish white hair. It was really tall, and he had white, a white robe on with sandals that tied up his leg. And I was about three years old at the time. And I remember he took my hand, and I got out of my bed, and we went out into the backyard, and this is at nighttime. And all of a sudden, it was very bright, and we started going up. And all I remember was this blinding light, and there were other people that looked like him, and they were going with me. And I got scared. And I remember, I just, all I knew was I had a panic attack, and I wanted to get away from him because I, I was scared at that point. I didn't know anything. And then next thing I remember, I was in my mom's lap crying. And wow. so, you know, I always thought, well, maybe it was just an encounter, a dream. Could have been anything, you know. Um, I was watching Ancient Aliens about five years ago, okay? And they were showing the four aliens that people that have been abducted all say that this is one of them. That, and there's only four. It's a picture of them. There's the Nords. There's the, the serpent race. There's the greys with the, you know, that we all see. Okay, the Nords, they showed a picture of it. He was very tall, he had blonde hair and blue eyes, he looked human, and he had sandals and a white robe with a silver belt, or a gold belt around. And I went, that's the thing that came and got me. So, some people say, ah, it's in your mind, well, whatever, but it happened. That, that's <laughs> so pretty I believe, crazy. I, I believe in it, and plus I've seen UFOs. I don't know if they're Earth UFOs or man-made UFOs or whatever, but they did crazy things that normally things can't happen, so. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> would you go to live on another planet if you could? I would. My biggest dream is to travel in outer space. Star Wars, Star Trek, all that stuff. I want to do that so bad. I'd give up everything if I could do that. I, I, there's always pictures of the space traveling yeah. when they're going up in space. And I, love I, I love that stuff. You too, girl. <laughs> what would you do first if you became the president? Oh, the, the sad thing about it is I don't want to be president because president can't do what he wants. As soon as he's president, you ever watch the presidents, as soon as they, they're all excited because they get inaugurated and everything's great, then they go into the briefing room. When they come out of the briefing room, they look like they've been scared shitless. You know, and what I, I believe what they're telling them is you have no rights, you will do what we tell you corporations and whatever else runs the whole thing. This is what you can do, this is what you can't do, and this is the truth. And when they see what's really going on, it freaks them out. I believe that. I could be wrong. It's just my hypothesis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deep, huh? <laughs> Maybe they're telling them about aliens. I, I, I want to believe that. The Blue Book is open, and they've talked about all that stuff. The um, Area 51, where there's the, you know, the aliens, and we have alien technology. And um, you know, all of a sudden, overnight, everything just pops up. We got all these things, and we're supposed to be cavemen. So I believe aliens did it. But let's go deeper. The Anunnaki, if you study about that, they genetically altered us to make us human. So that's way, 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 way back before uh, around the time of, uh, wow, gee, yeah, six, 7,000 years ago, I'm told according to the tablets. Wow. And it could be true, couldn't be not, who knows? <laughs> My theory is that we could just all be aliens and we came here and invaded all the animals and stuff. Well, I don't know if we invaded the animals. I think we were genetically altered as, as the animals were. And we're, humans are the only creatures that really can't live on this earth. We have to put clothes on, we can't stand in the sun, we burn. Everything about this earth is hostile to us, which means is we're not native to this planet. <clears throat> what do you hope happens when you die? Do you think you can take your talent with you? 
Um, you know, I think about that a lot because I'm 68 and I don't have that much longer to live, even though it's longer than, you know, it sounds like I sound like I'm going to die next year, but I, I believe I'm going to get to 100. My family, they, they get to the 100. So I think I'm going to be okay with that. But uh, as for life after death, you know, I don't know. Everybody talks about it. Everybody has a hypothesis or they've had their near death experience or whatever. But at the end of the day, nobody knows. It's going to, when I find out, it's, I'm going to find out when I die. I hope that I die with all the positive energy that I can muster up and all the love that people have for me. And I want to leave with that. And I don't know where I'm going or what's going to happen, but I want to leave in a positive note, hoping that it'll be positive wherever I go. Yeah. Which King's X album is your personal favorite? I would say Dog Man, um, because it was such a brutal record and there was a vision in my head. I wanted that record to be that heavy and that riffy and that the whole, everything about it. And uh, so we got it. Brendan O'Brien produced it and he's genius at doing that, bringing out the, the balls in the band. So I love that record. Yeah, me too. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Do you have any plans to write new material for King's X? Well, I've written about 25 new songs so far. And um, they're for me, any project or King's X, because I just write 24 hours a day. I always write. That's what I do. And I'm home. I just write and write and write. Um, yeah. And um, hopefully there'll be a new King's X record. I don't know for sure. We, everybody's dragging their feet. And, but we'll find out sooner or later. I don't know. As soon as somebody says, let's do it, I'm ready. I said, I'm ready to make a record, been ready to make a record for the last 10 years. So a lot of people want to blame me, say I've got too many projects and I'm doing too many things. But when, you, when your band don't want to make a record, what you going to do? You're making a record with somebody else because you want to do what you do, you know? So. Oh, I, hope, <laughs> I hope a new King's X album comes out. I hope out. so, too. Right. I hope so, too. If you could pick any dead musician to talk to and jam with, who would you pick? Jimi Hendrix. Great. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to meet him. Because, I mean, we, we're kind of alike in some ways, you know? I mean, I'm not related to him, but somehow the gene pool, we got a, we got, we're left-handed. We're kind of, what I read about his life and the way he grew up, mine is sort of similar. And, and so I would love to sit down and talk to him, find out what was going on in his head. Because he died when he was 27. So he's, he barely was, you know, barely had a chance to live to even know anything about life. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. I wish people, amazing musicians, didn't die. You know, Randy Rose died at a, yeah. at a young age. Yeah. Cliff Burton died at a young yeah. age. Jimi Hendrix. whole bunch of awesome musicians. Right. What are the heaviest metal bands that you listen to? Meshuggah. That's about it. All the rest of them, well, Periphery, too. But uh, uh, the rest of the bands, most of them just sound like copies of Meshuggah, and the grooves aren't cool. The mathematically, the riffs are amazing, but my sugar grooves with the mathematics. And that's what I love about them. Anybody that grooves, I'm there. If you, if you don't understand what the groove is, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Pantera is pretty groovy metal. They're good friends of mine. Well, they were good friends. My dime and Vinny, bless their hearts. With, uh, I've known those guys for 25 years, maybe, before they got a record deal. And we've all hung out. Dime was a, a good buddy of mine. We hung out and had a good time. Love well, those guys, and I love that band. And like I said, and like we were talking about the groove. Oh my God, the brutal grooves. You yeah. know, Dime said to me one time. He said, "Doug, there would be no Pantera without King's X." Wow. And uh, when he he heard the Gretchen, no, the first King's X record, he he pretty much really loved it. And he um, he played me Power of Love one time and told me exactly what it meant to him, every word and every riff. We were drunk one night, and he told me that, and that was really really. Uh, I was mesmerized because. Pantera is one of my favorite bands, and I used to go see them in, back in the day, and I remember one night we went to see them, and they walked on stage and did uh, Cowboys to Hell, the whole record, but didn't tell anybody they had a record deal or anything. And we just stood there, and when, we, when they got done, they walked off the stage, and everybody I knew, our jaws were on the ground, and we just went, what do we do? We've, you know, this is the, the metal to the pedal, you know. We didn't know where to go after that. Went backstage, hung out with them and stuff. It was cool. And they kept getting better and better, you know. Jeez, every record got more brutal. And I'm going, we just look at each other and go, wow. One time, Dime, got in Dime's car and he pulled out Power. No, it was uh, for one of their albums. I forgot what record it was, but he was playing it in his truck. And he had a humongous stereo in his truck. It was ear deafening. And he was playing a, a, a new Pantera song. I think it was... Uh, uh, a new level of 
something. I can't remember, but it was killing me. And, I, and when it's done, I go, dude, that's awesome. And the low end, dude, it's just rocking. And he says, no, this rocks. And he pushed a button and Dog Man came on. And the whole car went, boom. And I looked at him and went, oh. Because he said, no, listen to this. So he was like telling me I looked. So ba- basically, we're fans of each other. And Rex, too. And, and um, last time I saw um, Vinny, it was a few weeks before he died. And he came to see us play in Dallas. And he was telling us how much his brother was a big fan of ours and stuff. And we had a good talk. It was really beautiful. It was just uh, very surreal, especially since they're both gone now, you know. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, for these questions, you're going to say what you like better, okay? Okay. Politicians or vampires? What do I like, politicians or vampires? I would say neither. <laughs> <laughs> I hate politicians, and I, I don't believe in vampires. <laughs> but there could be. They could suck your blood. I don't know. Maybe. You never know. Yeah, yeah hopefully not. Religion or music? Do, what do I like more, religion or music? Oh, music. Religion is... I have to be nice. I, I believe religion is a, a great disservice to humanity. But on the other hand, I know a lot of people who are very religious, and it's saved their life, and it's how they get through the day. So I won't judge it, but I have nothing to do with it. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, you've asked some great, great questions, and I like to babble, so you just keep asking, and I'll keep answering. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> PC or non PC? Oh. <laughs> okay, PC means politically, politically correct. correct. Okay, I am completely politically incorrect. I like to say anything that I want to say when I say it. I believe that. It's all in a way, in an attitude, in the way a person says something. If they say something with a bad attitude towards you, then you feel, you can say, man, you're racist, maybe. But if you just say something in that there's a slang that we all use, um, I, I think it's ridiculous to, to, to be so sensitive about that stuff. Um, I believe, I'm a type of person that says, say the word nigger. I believe if either we all say it or we don't, nobody says it, period. But I, have a pro- I don't have a problem with saying it. I grew up hearing it. My white friends say it. I say it. It's in music. It's, it's, it's all around. I don't know why people get upset or just, just little words that people get so upset about that they want to blame you. And I said this one time from stage. I said, you know, we've been holding white people hostage for way too long. You know, say what you want. I mean, if you say you people, that's only saying black people our culture, certain thing we do, like white people have a certain thing that they do, or Jews or whatever. And I have a friend, one of my best friends is Jew, and I call him a Jew boy all the time. I said, man, you know, you, you know how to make money because you're a Jew boy, you know? And at one time we did, a, we did a video and we were smoking weed and I blew it in his face and he says, man, don't, I, I'm not your dog. I said, bark for me, nigga. And, and he went, boop, 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 and I posted it. And people cracked up laughing. You know, it was a white guy, well, Jewish. But um, I just don't have any problem with it. I think it's so ridiculous that people have problems with that stuff. I mean, even, even the Confederate flag, it's like, yeah, Confederate flag, it meant something terrible. But I saw Leonard Skinner, they put the flag up. They're friends of mine. They're not prejudiced at all. They don't hate black people at all. Or Phil and Sumno, you know, they say he's racist because he went on stage and did the Heil Hitler. He just did it to be stupid. All his girlfriends are black. I mean, he's one of my best friends, and he calls me the greatest human in the world. That's what he said to me. You are the greatest human being in the whole world. (laughs) I know he probably says that to everybody, but it was nice to hear it from him. Um, Yeah, I I think we just take this a little too far, you know. Thank you so much. You're welcome.